For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's to the glory of God that when we exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no glory to God when we exalt our church, when we exalt the pastor or presbytery or whatever the leader of the church is. There's no gratification of God in the adoration of the Pope, but it is sure divine glory when we lift up to the honor of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the Lamb of God, with take away the sin of our... That Jesus Christ, who is God, suffered and died according to the Scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's another thing according to Isaiah 53 that pleased God. When the judgment of sin was placed and put upon Jesus, when they beat the Son of God, when they whipped Jesus Christ, when they pulled the hair of his beard, when they mocked. You see, when, oh, the preacher that comes and we're going to mock him, we're going to make fun of him, so did they to Jesus. And so they took a cat of nine tails whip without mercy. They beat the daylights out of our Creator. Because our Creator is Jesus. He can be your Savior. He is your creator. And our creator, God, Jesus Christ, met our needs for sin that we can't do. We are never good enough. There is nothing we can do can outdo what Jesus did on Calvary. There is more to the story of Jesus than the, the, the wise men the shepherd boys, the manger. Because that little baby grew up. That baby lived for three, 33 and a half years. 30 years of ministry. He is the sinless perfection that man is not. He is the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. He is the door to the sheep. The living waters. He is the Word. And Jesus is the light of the world. He is God Almighty. He's the mighty counselor. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of the kings and the Lord of the lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Don't worry about the Delta. Come to the Alpha and the Omega and be saved. 
God, Jesus Christ, is the author of COVID-19, not China. God, Jesus Christ, is the author of Sam the Hurricane, not El Nemo. The volcano that erupted in the islands of the, of the Atlantic Ocean are an author of God, Jesus Christ. Not global warming. It is our God, it is our Savior that is trying to get your attention to repent before the judgment and the acts falls upon man and the world. The world's in corruptness, the world is in violence. That's what brought the flood of Noah's day. God says, I see violence. <coughs> you want this water? I see violence in all the earth. And I'm going to drown them all out. Now God promised Noah that he will not again wipe out the entire world with a flood. And he cast his bow in the sky, not for sodomites and sexual perversion. He put his bow in the sky to remind mankind and remind the beast of his covenant. And when God makes a promise, he keeps his promise. When God says, he will do. Rest assured, and it may not happen as, as quick as you want it to be. But what God says will happen. It is delayed by his long suffering. That God is not willing that any should perish. That all will come to repentance. It is God that created all things that are before our eyes, that are seen, and that are unseen. There is no Mother Nature. There is no Santa Claus. There is no evolution. It is the Creator God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It began with God. It did not explode. There was no big bang in the beginning. The big bang comes later. The Bible says that this earth, your goddess, Mother Earth is going to go up in flames and fervent heat. That the elements will melt. When God shows forth his face, the heavens and the earth will flee that holy face from the sin and destruction and the iniquity of mankind. This earth has been cursed by man's disobedience. When God told man don't eat of the fruit and he ate from the fruit, sin entered into the world and we are born into sin through Adam for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are sinners from our crib. 
when we think of only ourselves and we didn't honor mother and father. When we woke up mom at 2 and 3 a.m. in the morning and our diaper wasn't wet, our diaper wasn't soiled, and we were not hungry, we just, hey, we're going to cry, we're going to wake up mom, that's thinking of yourself, that's not honoring your mother, that's a sin. We were born into sin. When your parents told you do something and you did not do it, that's disobedience, that's a sin. When you stole a cookie, you stole money, you stole something from your parents, that is a thief. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Hey, our friend. When we told mom or dad, I didn't do it, and you did do it, you lied to your parents. And that is called, thou shalt not bear false witness. And... Thou, don't misquote the scriptures, and thou shalt honor thy father and mother. You have sinned from a child. You are a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. And we die because we are sinners. Whether you die of COVID-19 or you die by getting hit by a car or natural causes or cancer or a heart attack, whatever how you die of the million of ways to die, you die. Because you are a sinner born of Adam. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. And you need Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, I didn't say anything about a religion. I didn't say anything about church or baptism. What I did say I said about a man. I said about a name. And that man and that name is Jesus Christ. There is one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Mary does not fit because Mary is not a man. She is female. And the only mediator, according to God, the Holy Spirit, between us and God and God in us is the man, the man Christ Jesus. <clears throat> it's so simple. Jesus Christ saves. Jesus said of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father 
but by Jesus. That is the salvation of God. And that if you were to be asked how you are going to heaven, if your answer is not Jesus Christ, then you may not be going. And if it's surely not Jesus Christ, you will not be going. You cannot say, preacher, I'm going to heaven because the priest is praying for me. That's not the way. Well, I'm going to heaven because Mary. Mary's not the way. Well, I'm good. Well, the Bible says there's none that doeth good and sinneth not. So you're not and cannot be good enough. You say, well, preacher, I was baptized. And I'll show you in the Bible, from the very start of John the Baptist, baptism came after repentance. And you don't see no babies going in the water. You say, well, preacher, John Calvin said, we are predestined by God that I am going to heaven because God has predestined me. And you wild, wicked preacher going to hell because God predestined you to go to hell. We are predestined to our destination of heaven and hell. That's what John Calvin, Calvinism taught. And I'll give you one biblical word to shoot down John Calvin. Calvin. If. I am. If we were preordained and predestinated in the Bible to heaven or to hell by God, God would never put the word if. Because the word if defiles your predestinal course by God. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, giving you the option, yay or nay, Well, you say, I tell you, preacher, I'm a Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witnesses believe they are the 144,000. Last count, they are over a million. Now, unless you got common core math, a million is over 144,000. You got a trouble. The day of many for the Jehovah Witness to be a cult and be liars is the day that they got the 144,001 person in their assembly and then 144,002 and 144,003 and then that Jesus Christ was coming back 
and World War I came, and Jesus Christ is coming back, and World War II came, and we built this great house for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob to come and dwell, and they didn't come, so now it's the office of the president of the Jehovah Witnesses. Well, I guess Jehovah Witness ain't going to be nothing for you. And then the Mormons, are you going to put your faith and trust in a religion that rebelled against the United States of America, though she wasn't completely united yet? That the very reason why Joseph Smith took his group to Utah is because bankruptcy, because of rebellion against the laws of this nation, the running away from husbands of wives that they stole, of their thefts and dishonesty, drove them to Utah and they wrote the other testament of Jesus Christ who came to North America to a group of people archaeology can't find and to places that are not in the historical records of the America and of the Indians, or, nor, or the Native Americans. They found last week the oldest footprints ever to be found by mankind. But they have not found one person and one place in the other testament of Jesus Christ. That's questionable. Well, preacher, we have Mary Baker Eddy. You mean the healing woman that died? She wasn't very good healing. She put a telephone in her coffin. She said, I will call you. She must not have been buried with dimes because she never called back. You see, it is not religion. When Jesus said, he is the way, he didn't say, Baptist is the way, Catholic is the way, Presbyterian is the way, agnostic is the way, He said, He is the way. There is no other way spoken by God who is Jesus. And that the Bible says you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It said you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. What it does not say in Acts 16.31 is that it does not say you must join the church. It says you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It does not say be baptized. It says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 
It does not say, eat and drink my body and my blood. What it does say, it says, Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does not say, go to Mary. It does say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does not say ignore. It says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, chapter 1, chapter 2, get to 16, verse 31. The King James Bible says, after he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. How simple can it be? That the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now religion will add but the Bible, God said, add not to my words. Diminish not from my words. That when Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross, his words were, it is finished. And when it is finished, that's it. There's nothing more to add. There's no, mo nothing more to take away. Salvation has been approved, has been met by the work of Jesus on the cross. It is finished is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when you get a religion that adds to The last words of Jesus. Because you see, it is finished by the spoken word of God. Is a natural, it's a holy preservative. When you add a touch of works, when you add a religion, when you put in some philosophy, or you add a, a thinking, an imagination, then it becomes an unnatural preservative. It's an artificial preservative, and many people don't like artificial preservatives. There are people who will study a nutrition label for the food that they will eat. 
They will read them ingredients. And they will make sure that the most natural foods are in that jar, in that container. And nothing artificial, nothing added. And if you were to get a box of cookies of the mass of the Catholic Church, and you look on the side of that box and see ingredients, you will not find on that ingredient list of the mass, you will not find Jesus Christ listed. You might find enriched flour, maybe some salt, a leaven agent, but you will not find Jesus Christ in the ingredients of the Mass. That's an artificial ingredient. You cannot find goodness. And many people come up to the preacher and say, oh, I'm good. That's not an ingredient. Not when the Bible says there is none good. There is none that doeth good. Your goodness is an artificial ingredient, not part of the salvation of God. And no artificial preservatives of man and Satan will get you into heaven and New Jerusalem. They will get you into hell. There are people in hell today and they went to church. There are people in hell that have a documentation that we were a member of XYZ Church and the Dominion and denomination and, and brotherhood and, and what association. And that documentation and the gratification of being part of somebody and group. And they are in hell. Because they did not believe in the name and the person of Jesus Christ. There are people roasting in hell for all eternity. And they were baptized. They were sprinkled. They were dinkled. They were... In New York City, they were put in front of a fire hydrant. They may have been a baby, they may have been an adult, but salvation is their water baptism and they are in hell. And their words in hell is, oh, if I had a little bit of drop of that water to cool my tongue. There are people who are in hell today, they gave money. They helped feed the poor. They build houses for people. They, they, they did all kinds of things for people and they're in hell. Because their works cannot save them. It's an artificial preservative not accepted by God. It's funny to think about that in heaven or hell, there are no Baptists. They're unknown. In heaven and hell, there's no Catholics. No such thing. There are no denominations in heaven or in hell. Hell is an equal opportunity tormentor. It doesn't care about your race. It doesn't care about your religion. It doesn't care if you're a male or female. 
Hell will torment you as equal as a man who went to church all his life to a person that, that murdered babies. Or a kind old, sweet old, old lady who did not put their trust in Jesus. There are nice people in hell. There are good people in hell. There are wicked and vile people in hell. You see, we make the mistake of putting degrees upon sin. And usually our sins, we you know, those are the lesser degrees. And you and your sin, oh, how wicked you are. But one sin makes us a sinner. How terrible and how small it may be, we are sinners before a holy and righteous God. And if our sins have not been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ, how wicked the sin is and how minor the sin is. You'll be cast into a devil's hell. You see, you will have people who believed in God. You will have agnostics. They, they don't know. They're not sure. And then you'll have atheists in hell. Hell is an equal opportunist of all people and races to torment you. Who you will not find in hell are those that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. You won't find them in hell. Those who have believed on Jesus Christ alone, not of works, will not be found in the gates of hell, they'll be found to be with the Lord for all eternity. Because Jesus, the way, is the natural preservative of it is finished. You don't need a little religion. You don't need a little goodness. You don't need a little water. It is finished. Plain and simple. It'd be like a baker has made a large, fancy wedding cake for a couple who got married. And, and, I mean, this wedding cake has the doodahs. And it's got the tears. It's four or five levels. And it's got pretty little flowers. And it's got the little... I mean, it's just a scrumptious, wonderful-looking cake. And the baker delivers the cake and says, Voila! Finished! There it is! And everybody's like, wow, oh man, whoa, great job. And someone comes in and starts putting ketchup and mustard all over it. And relish. And you say, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm adding some more. I'm, I'm finishing the cake. It was finished. What are you doing? And that's religion. Religion is the mustard on a wedding cake. Being good and doing things is ketchup on a wedding cake. Well, I give money and I help the poor is relish on a wedding cake. It's not going to taste so good, is it? Here's a nice, 
big slice of wedding cake. And it's got mustard on it. It don't gonna taste so good. And you can't scrape it off. And that's what your religion looks like before a holy and righteous God. You see, I know Jesus suffered and died on that cross according to the scriptures. And I know that he was buried. And I know that he, was, he arose the third day according to the scriptures. I mean, we had Resurrection Sunday in our church. Though it's called Easter. But you know, I'm good. And they'll be saying that to Jesus. Jesus, here is your salvation. Here is your piece of wedding cake. With relish. You can't scrape the relish off. The juice of the relish has gone into the icing, has gone into the cake, and that's what your filthiness of doing something to the holy work and the finished work of Jesus Christ. It has been marred. It has been ruined. To what you have done. To what God has finished. And it's okay. You say, well... Preacher, I'm good and I'm going to trust in my goodness. And you'll find people in hell just like you because there are good people in hell. What you won't find is somebody who has put their faith and trust in Jesus. You see, my brother over here and me and my daughter and those here that have put their faith and trust in Jesus, you won't find us in hell. But the person that said, I went to church, I'm a good whatever, fill in the blank. Those will be the ones in hell. What about that wicked serial killer? That man that, that, he, that, you know, he defiled children and he killed people. Yeah, he might be in hell. Unless he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ before he died. Then he will be in heaven. It is what you do with Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Reject Jesus Christ and you will hear from Jesus. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You know, we all heard the expression is not what you know. But who you know? Salvation is not what you know. It's who you know. And you better know the Lord Jesus Christ and you better have put your faith or put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Because that's the salvation that's in Jesus. Keep your, eyes, keep your eyes open. She's turned on that radio. I think she called the police. Keep your eyes open. Jeez. Yeah. Why? Because she's a jerk.
and she, if the police do come, she wants to be caught. Look how innocent we are. I know her tactics. I know. Jesus Christ is willing and able to save. You've got to call upon him. Whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. And that the way, the truth, and the life is in Jesus Christ, and there is no access to God except through Jesus. And that Jesus Christ is the salvation of Jesus Christ. And nothing else. God has made it that simple. Come to Jesus and be saved. Come to religion and works and be lost. And Jesus came into the world to seek that which is lost. And if you're without Jesus Christ, you're lost. And you may not know you are lost. And that's why you got a preacher coming to you every Saturday. To preach to you the gospel and tell you without Jesus Christ, you are lost. And Luke chapter 19, I think 10 or 20. See, 1910 or 1920. Jesus said, I came to seek that which is lost. Are you lost today? Come and be found by Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. And be saved. Because without Jesus Christ, you are not saved, you are lost. And when lost people die, they go to hell. People who are saved, when they die, they are absent from the body and present with the Lord. You don't get to heaven by what you do. You do not get to heaven by what man does. And you do not get to heaven by what Satan does. You get to heaven by what Jesus done. And what Jesus did he suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the way of salvation. That is how you are saved. On April 21st, 1987, I knelt down and I asked Jesus to save my soul. I did not want to go to hell. I am a doctor of theology, but that means squat. There are men and women out there, they are a PhD in theology and they don't know nothing of salvation. There are people who can speak Hebrew and Greek, so what, who cares? But they don't know Jesus. There are instructors in seminaries, I call them seminaries, and they don't know Jesus and they'll go to hell. There are scholars. 
they don't know Jesus, they'll go to hell. And there are homeless people here in Daytona Beach living out in the woods, living on a bench. They know Jesus, and they'll see Jesus. There are people down and out, an outcast by the world. And they are saved and put their faith in Jesus Christ alone. And when they die, they'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. There are scholars in hell. There are scholars in heaven. There are all kinds of people that enter into hell. And there are only those that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone that are in heaven. Heaven is a unique club, if I can use the term very loosely. Heaven is by those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Nothing added and nothing take away. That's the danger of modern Bibles. When your faith is holy upon the Holy One, Jesus Christ. When you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. When you just go to church, you're lost. When you just help the homeless, when you just give money to alms, you're lost and going to hell. Because those things cannot save you. 